Bueno, start it up. Sir, sir, one minute. Sir, is it being shared? Share or sir? Screen sharing or a? We are here, madam. Khali, we are not. We are here. We are here, sir. Okay, one second. Yeah, hello, good afternoon, students. Welcome to the TREI webinar chemistry class. This is Nazia Sultana, PGT from Vikarabad. Yeah, yesterday we have started the chapter that is solutions. Yeah, we have gone through the summary of the chapter. We have discussed about what are solutions, what is a solute, what is a solvent, different types of solutions we have seen based upon the physical states of the solute and the solvent, okay? Yeah, based upon the physical state of the solute and the solvent. As well as depending upon the solvent, aqueous solution and the alcoholic solution, we have seen uh, methods of expressing the concentration yeah, and uh, we have also seen the properties of the solutions, right? For example, there are different types of solutions, gas in liquid, okay, and liquid in liquid. We have even discussed Rolle's law, elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point, we have discussed till there. Yeah, those are all called as the colligative properties. Yeah, colligative properties. Colligative properties are those properties which depend upon the number of particles, okay? And they are irrespective of the nature of the particle. Such properties are, are called as colligative properties. And we have uh, discussed already those, okay? Yeah, the co colligative properties are of four types. Relative lowering of vapor pressure or lowering of vapor pressure, then depression, of freezing point, elevation of boiling point, and osmotic pressure. So what is lowering of vapor pressure? Lowering of vapor pressure is the decrease in the vapor pressure upon formation of the solution. If you are taking that decrease, if you are taking the ratio, that is what is relative lowering of vapor pressure. OK? And uh, depression in freezing point, we have discussed elevation in boiling point. Depression in the freezing point is nothing but the freezing point of the solution is at a lesser temperature than the pure solvent. Elevation of boiling point is the solution would be boiled, will be, would be boiling at a higher temperature when compared to the pure solvent. Okay. And uh, next, another property is osmotic pressure. So we will see what is that and what is the use of all these colligative properties. The major important use of these colligative properties is that we can find out the molecular weight of the unknown substances, okay? For example, a new polymer has been synthesized. If you want to know its molecular weight. So by using one of the colligative properties, we can find it out. So that is one of the important use of the colligative properties. Yeah. Next we would be seeing osmosis and osmotic pressure, okay? So what is osmosis? Let us see. Osmosis is, you have, you have learned this right from your lower classes, eighth, ninth class you are learning, right? Osmosis is nothing but the movement of the solvent molecules from the lower concentration to a higher concentrated solution, right? movement of the solvent from a lower concentration solution to the higher concentration solution through the semi-permeable membrane. That is called as osmosis, okay? So we are only the solvent molecules are able to pass through, right? 
now you see <clears throat> so in order to prevent osmosis we can apply the pressure you can observe here yeah ma in this case we are having this this is one part of the solution this is the other part of the solution here you can observe only a few solute particles so that means it is the lower concentrated solution whereas this is the solution with higher concentration because here the sol solute particles are more okay so now what happens is okay from this part of the solution the solvent molecules would be moving into this higher concentrated solution that is what is osmosis okay in order to prevent uh, see as a result of osmosis what is happening the volume of this previously concentrated solution is increased okay the volume is increased or not yes this has increased how did it increase it has increased because of the movement of the solvent molecules okay from the lower concentrated one from here the solvent molecules have moved over here for that reason we can see the increase in the volume over here okay so that movement is what is called as osmosis okay in order to prevent osmosis okay we need to apply certain pressure that pressure is called as osmotic pressure the pressure the pressure just required to stop the movement of the solvent molecules is called as osmotic pressure yeah you can see here now why is this important because whenever we take a cell and keep it in the solution the solution can be having more concentration or more concentration when compared to the liquid present in the cell or the solution can be having lesser concentration than the concentration of the cell okay so you can see here this is the normal cell so whenever we are putting a cell in the hypertonic solution hypertonic means where the concentration is more that means solvent is less so what happens water from the cell would be moving into the solution as a result the cell gets dehydrated it would be shrinking okay now you see here the other case we'll see we would be putting the cell in the hypotonic solution so what would happen water will be entering into the cell as a result the cell would bulge okay it would get swollen okay so both are lethal to the cell both can uh, destruct the cell okay so this happens for example saline whenever the saline is injected the concentration should be similar to that of the concentration within the cell okay otherwise either the shrinking would occur or else swelling swelling of the cells will occur okay so now this uh, osmotic pressure it has been uh, derived as uh, it is represented as pi and it is directly proportional to the number of moles of the solute particles in a given volume of the solution okay and it also depends upon the uh, universal gas constant and particular temperature okay so if we remove this what do we get is we get pi is equal to n by v r t okay so if we send this v to the other side so what do we get pi v is equals to n r t okay this is simple uh, just like our ideal gas equation which you have studied in the first year pv is equals to n r t here it is pi v is equals to n r t so what is pi pi is nothing but the osmotic pressure okay what is osmotic pressure the pressure required to stop the osmosis okay yeah next reverse osmosis so what is reverse osmosis the reverse osmosis is nothing but you can observe here okay in the normal case what happens is what we are doing is we are separating we are taking the pure water this is the pure water and this is the solution they are separated by the 
semi permeable membrane this is the semi permeable membrane usually what happens water means it is the pure solvent so water would be moving to the solution because the solution is having lesser solvent molecules okay so movement of solvent molecules from lower concentration to higher concentration concentration in the sense here solute okay solute is not present here so this is lower concentration in this part solute is present so this is having higher concentration okay now what is happening the solvent molecules are moving here so this is what is osmosis but what we are doing is if we are applying the pressure on to the solution side the direction of osmosis is reversing so actually it it has to be here in this way but because of the application of external pressure the direction of the osmosis has been reversed so this is what is reverse osmosis okay so what is the use of reverse osmosis we can extract pure water from the saline water okay so the applications of reverse osmosis let us see sea water desalination pharmaceutical water purification okay pharmaceutical water purification yeah bottled water production waste water recycling car wash spot free rinse okay lab water purification brackish wa well water desalination brackish means which is saline okay marine water marine water and brackish water marine water is the ocean water and brackish water is uh, having lesser salinity when compared to the marine water and more salinity when compared to the pure water that is called as brackish water in between its salinity is in between the top the pure water and the marine water okay so these are the <clears throat> applications of reverse osmosis so next is coming to the another topic that is abnormal molar mass okay abnormal molar masses are nothing but see actually whenever we are carrying out a uh, studying the colligative property right we would be uh, dissolving some amount of solute right so what happens is the solute can either dissociate or it can associate for example if we take ionic substances example we'll take nacl okay whenever we dissolve this in the water what happens it would be splitting into the two particles that is na plus and cl minus okay one particle is becoming two so because uh, colligative properties they depend upon the number of particles okay because of the dissociation the colligative colligative property would be doubled over here because of two particles one is becoming two okay same thing if we take okay uh, for example if it is mgcl2 okay what would happen we know that mgcl2 it will it would split into mg plus 2 ions and 2 cl minus ions so one molecule is giving three particles so here the again the there would be a increase in the colligative property okay and suppose if you take acetic acid okay what is the formula of acetic acid ch3cooh when we take this in the water because of hydrogen bonding it would be dimerizing dimerizing okay that means what two units are behaving like a single particle okay so now what happens the colligative property would decrease okay so the either the increase or decrease because of that the molar mass might show a change okay so that is what is called as abnormal molar mass okay so molar mass calculated by colligative properties that is either lower or higher than expected is called as abnormal molar mass and it was in uh, another a scientist called as want have he has studied this and he has expressed it in the factor called as i that is called as van't hoff factor and it is nothing but it is the ratio of the normal molar mass to the abnormal molar mass okay so ratio of normal molar mass to the abnormal molar mass or else 
observed colligative property by calculated colligative property or total number of moles of particles after association or dissociation by total number of particles before or after dissociation okay so this is regarding the abnormal molar mass yeah because of that we are going to see a change in the colligative properties so simply nothing but what you have to know do is see we already know the colligative properties okay so those colligative properties are multiplied with the van't hoff factor okay so you can see here we know that a relative lowering of vapor pressure okay relative lowering of vapor pressure is nothing but p not s minus p s by p not s what is p not s p not s is the vapor pressure of pure solvent p s is the vapor pressure of the solution okay this is lowering of vapor pressure it's a ratio to vapor pressure of pure solvent we are taking that is what is relative lowering of vapor pressure and that is equal to the mole fraction of the solute we said yesterday right so now because of van t hoff factor okay we are multiplying that with i yeah next is elevation in boiling point okay so elevation in boiling point you can observe here okay delta tb is equal to kb into m what is m m is molality and depression at freezing point delta tf into kf okay delta tf is equals to kf into m that is also molality and these have to be multiplied with the van't hoff factor we are saying and pi is equal to crt what is c c is nothing but the concentration number of moles to the volume okay nothing but molarity okay and this this is further multiplied with the van't hoff factor so pi is equals to icrt okay so now we would be doing few uh, problems okay numericals which would help you okay for your competitive exams yeah let us see yeah mole fraction of glycerin okay what is its formula c3h5oh taken thrice in solution containing 36 grams of water and 46 grams of glycerin is so what are they asking us they are asking okay mole fraction okay mole fraction of glycerin so what what is the formula to find out mole fraction we have to find out the moles of water and moles of glycerin okay so first we will see moles of water moles of water so what is the formula to find out the number of moles given weight by molecular weight what is the weight of water given 36 okay 36 and molecular weight of water is 18 so, so 36 by 18 is 2 okay now we have to find out the moles of glycerin okay what is the moles of glycerin or okay moles of glycerin is nothing but i'll write it as gly okay it is given as the weight is given as 46 okay we need to know the molecular weight okay yesterday i have told you in order to know the molecular weights you have to know the correct molecular formula the formula is given over here c3 h5 oh taken thrice so c3 means 12 into 3 because the weight of carbon is 12 12 into 3 36 okay each hydrogen is one so five hydrogens here So one into five, five, and here you can take it as OH he has given, right? OH taken thrice. So first we will be calculating the weight of OH. Oxygen is sixteen, hydrogen is one. Sixteen plus one, seventeen. So seventeen into three. So seventeen into three is fifty-one. Okay. Now we will sum up. How much did we get? Six plus five, eleven. Eleven plus one, twelve. Twelve. One carry. So five plus one is six. Six plus three is. Nine ninety-two. So ninety-two is the molecular weight of glycerin. Okay, molecular weight of glycerin is ninety-two. So you can see here, forty-six goes in ninety-two exactly. 
two times. So it is one by two. One by two means point five. Okay. So point five is the moles of glycerin. Now we are supposed to find out. Okay. With this, the problem is not done. We are supposed to find out the mole fraction of glycerin, right? So what is that formula? The formula is moles of glycerin. Moles of glycerin we have got it as point five. Okay. By moles of water two plus moles of glycerin. So zero point five. So what do we get it as? Zero point five divided by two point five. This point can be cancelled, right? So five by twenty five. Five ones are five. Five is twenty five. So what do we get? One by five. So one by five is nothing but zero point two. So what is the answer here? C. So C is the right option. Okay. So this is how. First, what you have to do is just go through the question. What is given? Okay. What you are supposed to find out? What is the correct formula you see? Then you would be able to do. Yeah. Next, we'll see another question. Which of the following conditions is not satisfied by an ideal solution? So, what is an ideal solution? Ideal solutions are those which obey Rolle's law. Okay. And delta H mix and delta V mix are zero. Okay. So you see, here, what are the options given? Delta H mix equals to zero. So it is an ideal. Delta V mix is zero. So it is again ideal. Rolle's law is obeyed. Ideal. Formation of an azeotropic mixture. Okay. If azeotropic mixture is formed, that means what? It is not an ideal solution. Okay. So D is the option. So what is the question? Is not satisfied by ideal. Okay. Formation of azeotropic mixture is not satisfied by an ideal solution. Yeah. Next question. Which has the lowest boiling point at one atmospheric pressure? Okay. What are given? Let us see. Zero point one molar KCl. One molar urea, one mole, uh, one molar, zero point one molar CaCl two, and zero point one molar AlCl three. So among these four options, if you observe, what you can notice, A, C, B are all ionic, whereas urea is covalent. Okay, we know that ionic substances would ionize. Okay, so if it is KCl, it would become two particles, right? K plus and Cl minus, so the colligative property would be more. Now, if you see urea, it will not split, so it will be behaving as one particle. If it is CaCl two, it would be splitting into three particles. AlCl three, it would be giving into four particles. So, how, where are the number of particles less? The number of particles are less in the case of urea because it is not undergoing either association or dissociation. Okay, for that reason, its boiling point is going to be the lowest. Whereas, if you see for the others, they would be increasing by Van Hoff factor. Okay, so hope you are following it. Yeah. Next one. Osmotic pressure of a solution is. 0.0821 atmosphere at a temperature of 300 kelvin the concentration in moles per liter would be okay so what is given as yes. osmotic pressure is given okay osmotic pressure is given okay what is it that given pi is equals to 0.08 okay To one atmosphere. What do we know? We know that pi is equals to C R T. Okay, so we are supposed to find out this C. We are given with pi, and we are given with the temperature. Temperature is given as three hundred. We know the value of R. What is the value of R? Zero point zero eight two one liter atmosphere. Okay, mole inverse, right? And pi value is also given. What is the value of pi given? Zero point zero eight two one. So it is easy for us. Okay. 
to calculate because this and this gets cancelled. So what do we get? Okay, we get one equals to that because it has gone one time, right? So one equals to C into 300 because R has been cancelled, right? So C equals to one by 300. So one by 300, how can we write it as? We can write it as 0.3 into, okay? 10 to the power of minus two. Okay, so option is C. Correct option is C. Hope you are understanding, okay? So they will not be giving us the value of universal gas constant. We ourselves have to know it because it is universal constant. Such values would not be provided. Okay, we ourselves have to learn those. <clears throat> yeah, next let us see another one. The boiling point of an azeotropic mixture of water and ethanol is less than that of water and ethanol. The mixture shows, okay. What is it saying? The boiling point of the mixture is lesser than the Pure components, okay, pure components are water and ethanol, okay. If you are just taking water, it's boiling point is 100. Ethanol, it's about 96, right? But once upon mixing, their boiling point is lesser than those, lesser than 100, lesser than 96. That means it is boiling at lesser than 96 itself. That means what? It is a positive deviation solution because boy, the, the interaction is, reduced because of the reduced interaction they are going into the vapor phase easily at boiling point what happens liquid will convert into the vapor so same thing it is happening just by upon mixing that getting that mixture the liquid has gone into the vapor phase easily at a lower temperature so we say it as positive deviation solution yeah. next question will be the Vanthoff factor I accounts for. Yeah, what did we discuss just now? We have discussed that Vanthoff factor is, uh, it gives us an idea about the extent of association or dissociation. So we have to see these two words, right? Whether it is association or dissociation. So let us check the options, okay? So the degree of solubilization wrong, extent of dissociation, yes. Dissolution, no. Degree of decomposition, decomposition of solution, it is saying no. So what is the right answer? The right answer is it, give, it accounts for the extent of dissociation of the solute. So answer is B. Okay. Yeah. Next question. The molar elevation constant depends upon. Okay. So what is molar elevation constant? The word K, the term KB, okay, is called as molar elevation constant or abeloscopic constant, okay? So that molar elevation constant, it depends upon the nature of the solvent itself. So this is a direct theory bit, okay? Yeah. Next question we would see. Which relation is not correct? Okay. So what are the relations given? You can see here. Delta TB. Okay. Delta TB equals to KB into 1000 into W2 by M2 into W1. So what are these W1, W or M2? Let us see here. Okay. The generally the solvent is taken as one because it is taken in larger quantity, we are giving it as one. Okay. Whereas the solute is given the number as two. Okay. So now you see here. We know that delta TB. Okay, delta TB is nothing but it is the elevation in boiling point, right? So what it is, it is directly proportional to we know that KB into M. What is molality? Molality is nothing but weight of solute okay by molecular weight of solute by that is number of moles of solute dissolved in a 
known weight of the solvent taken in grams if we are taking it in the grams we have to convert it into we have to divide it by 1000 okay to convert it into kgs okay the number of moles of solute dissolved in a given weight of solvent expressed in kgs okay so when we are taking the weight of the solvent in the grams we are converting it into kgs by dividing it by 1000 so that comes to the numerator so this is the correct relationship what is as not correct they are asking okay so next you see m2 is equals to kf tb so these two terms are different yes or no if it is tb it should be kb but they are give, they have given us kf kf is cryoscopic constant okay and we know that uh, this one you see third option if you see pi v is equals to nrt okay so this is a uh, if these two are at these two are constant if 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 you are taking at a constant temperature r value is definitely constant only so what can we say pi is equals to n2 by v so this is also correct only and this is p not minus p if you are okay even that is the correct relation only so we are asked to find out the incorrect relation so b is the correct option okay next is, people add sodium chloride to water while boiling eggs this is two okay so why do people add sodium chloride to the it is that means what sodium chloride is a salt so we add it to the water water is pure solvent okay that means we are making the solution so solution means it would boil higher temperature so the boil it would increase the boiling okay for that reason people add salt to the eggs boiling eggs okay while boiling the eggs yeah next question out of molality molarity formality and mole fraction those which are in temperature okay so here one thing what you have to remember is in whichever the concentration method volume is not present that is independent of temperature okay so here you have the thorough formula so which formula doesn't include the volume molality and mole fraction okay these two do not include the volume so these two are independent of the temperature okay this is again a direct theory bit next if 2 grams of naoh is present in 200 ml of the solution its molarity would be okay so what is given here here weight of solute is given volume of solution is given we are supposed to find out the molarity we know that molarity is capital m it is nothing but the weight of solute by molecular weight of solute what is the solute naoh so it is its molecular weight is 40 into 1000 by volume of solution in ml because it has given the ml so we have to take the 1000 over here okay 1000 by 200 okay so we can cancel it like this yes or no this zero also gets cancelled so 2 2 gets cancelled so what do what did we get 1 by 4 1 by 4 is nothing but 0.25 okay so that is the option so answer is a okay next another question you'll see 5% of cane sugar whose molecular weight is 342 is isotonic with 1% of a substance molecular weight of x is okay what did they give they have given us it is an isotonic solution so isotonic solutions would have same osmotic pressure and we know that pi is equals to okay n by v r t okay so when these are same and these are same these would be same so just we can correlate n okay n1 should be equals to n2 so what is n n is 
the number of moles okay 5% cane sugar they are saying that means 5 grams of cane sugar okay 5 grams of cane sugar and its uh, molecular weight is 342 directly we can do okay 5% means 5 grams in 1000 ml of the solution 100 ml of the solution okay and 1% means 1 gram in 100 ml of the solution okay so uh, that means both are volumes are same 100 ml only so directly you can take 5 by 342 equals to okay 1 by let the molecular weight of the substance a would be x okay so what do we get here cross multiply x equals to 342 divided by 5 Okay, three forty-two divided by five. So upon calculation, what do we get? Three forty-two by five is yeah, three forty-two by five. Five ones are five six is thirty. So four is the remainder. Five eight is forty. Two is the remainder. Two doesn't go. So we are taking the decimal point. Okay, so four times it becomes twenty, right? So four is up. So answer is sixty-eight point four. Okay. So this is the molecular weight of the substance. Madam, okay. Two minutes. Okay. Yeah, sir. Next one, ma. Last question. Three moles of P and two moles of Q are mixed. What will be their total vapor pressure in the solution? Okay. And if the vapor pressures are eighty and sixty, so what we have to do? We know that pure The P total is nothing but X A into P A. Okay, X is the mole fraction into its vapor pressure. Okay, plus X B into P B. So if you take this, we get it as seventy two torr. Okay, three moles of P, two moles of Q are mixed, and their total vapor pressure what would be if their partial vapor pressures are eighty and sixty? You please solve it. Okay, you will get it. Yeah. With this, I conclude. Okay. So this chapter is done. You please go through all the formulae and practice it. Okay, madam.